This Dragonfly trimaran is lightweight and built for speed. She's also turned out to be a fun yacht for cruising. We caught up with Rob and Laurie in Greece. So catamarans have got the trampoline that you've right. got. You've got two. Right. Do, do you actually utilize oh, them? Do you come out? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. What we'll do is we'll put it on autopilot. Yeah. We'll come out here and cool off. So if, uh, if we want to keep dry, we'll be on the high side and laying out here. If we want to get a little cooled off, we'll go on the low side and get splashed <laughs> by the water as we're going through the water. So we'll be cruising it. You know, we'll be doing 10 knots out here. Yeah. Awake coming off the back of the boat. Wow. And we're just relaxed. And you're out here lying on this. Lying like on this. Fantastic. You know, there's hardly any heel. We're just, it's yeah, just, yeah. you can almost sleep here. Yeah, perfect. And the floats then. Right. I mean, they're, you can't put anything heavy in them. Is that right? But, the, but they're good for storage. Right. Yeah? Not particularly. So we keep light stuff in there. Yeah. There's four separate compartments. So yeah. it's, it's always buoyant. Yeah. And it's, and it's configured that, um, you know, obviously, obviously the, the, the one on the, the leeward side is going to dip in a bit, but not right. much. How much right. heel do you actually get? Well, we sail very conservative. We go by the manufacturer's instructions. Yeah. So um, I'll put it this way. On the windward side, the hull just barely skips over the top of the water. So oh, okay. on, on the leeward side, it, it just barely dips in. You yeah. know? The manufacturer says, when this float starts going underwater, you're overpowered. We don't even come Whoa, close okay. to that yeah. ever. No. So no, because that's per, it's a huge it's, amount of buoyancy. A lot of buoyancy. Absolutely yeah, you just have huge. to really push it for that. And uh, yeah, okay. And so we know these these all fold in. So how exactly. does that how does that happen? They cancel either here <clears> then, it just folds back, does it? Exactly. It just so, tilts back in. So the mast is held up with diamond stays. Yeah. And then there's a running back stay out here. So that's flexible. We release the running back stay. Yeah. And we have uh, lines on a winch, electric winch. We press the button and it just folds just back. Just folds it in, yeah. It's amazing. Okay. One side at a time. So you can go, what would you do? You go into a marina and you hit the button and fold it in as you come yeah, up to the berth, right. do you? We do one side at a time. <laughs> How it, cool. It takes a little bit of uh, effort. Running around, I'd say. So we have this, this line here is a safety line. Yes, yes. Uh, in case something does go wrong, which yeah. I, I can't imagine what could, maybe maybe the, the clamp comes off or the yeah. cleat comes off. Yeah. But anyhow, that's the safety. So we have to undo that, then we wrap it up, we release the backstay, hit the button, and it slowly folds back. Yeah. So you've even got a bowsprit. Right. This is nice. I mean, we like our bowsprit. It's somewhere where we can sit out. I know you've got the, the tramps, but uh, yeah. It's nice to have, and it makes yeah, exactly. anchoring easy as right, well, doesn't right. it? Because your anchor's away. Then we put our code zero up there. Yeah. And then we fly with that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so, I bet yeah. she goes well with that. And How then, well uh, does she point, by the way? Um, well, we'll get 60 degrees to the wind. Yeah. Maybe so, a little better. So better than a catamaran. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So coming back through, you've got uh, uh, good hatches, by the look of it. Yep. In all of your uh, saloon top here. And and you're sheeting a long way in board, so that, I mean, that's, you can't get quite a good sheeting angle, you can see from that, because normally it'd be more, it'd be further out board, but you've got the barber hauler, yeah? Yeah, so, we have the barber hauler, so we can, we can haul these sheets, you know, way out here. Yeah. And catch a lot of wind, yeah. you know, on the right, yeah, right yeah. point of sail. Yeah, if you're, if you're running, yeah, it works really well. Centre cockpit, which I know you like. Oh, yeah. We like that. Right. I mean, it just makes you feel safer, doesn't it? It does, and having it's, a well, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of the centre of motion, yeah, so you yeah. don't move a lot. Good for that. Well, Laurie, the first thing I've noticed is it feels very wide, actually, given that it is quite a narrow space because you have got the storage out there. Yes, we do have storage out there. And there's storage, you know, yeah. all along either side. Of course, I have to share. This is my side. The port side is, is uh, the lady's side. And <laughs> this is Rob's side. And he's got cameras and... I let the boat documents be here and so on, and we can actually sit six people at the table. Yeah, you can. I which can is see kind that. of nice. Yeah. No, it is nice to have a good, a good big table, but you do need to fold down sides, don't you? Yes, we mm. fold down the sides, and actually this can be a double if you want to have more people here. The boat is rated for eight people. I don't know how they get them in there. Okay. <laughs> and you're in the aft cabin, are you? We're in the bow. We're in the bow cabin, right? which, which is... Oop. Pretty much, you just climb in. <laughs> okay. You just climb into the cabin. Oh, wow, well, there's a nice big bed when you're there. Yeah. We, 
we're campers, you know. We we had an RV for a long time, and of course the F twenty seven is just the same, very very tight. I will come through. Thank you. And then the toilet is actually hidden. So we were standing Everything on that. Everything has two <laughs> uses in a dragonfly. You know, you've got your closet, and you know, you and you've got your toilet. You just have space. You can actually close this off if you have someone who wants to use the restroom and you're sleeping up there. That's great. I noticed that when it comes to your galley, that you've also got your chopping surface on top of your cooker. Yeah. So how does that work? Well, I cut things over here or else I prepare everything in the beginning and do sort of like the cooking show, you know. <laughs> I've got everything over here all ready to go. But this this is the cook the cooker. And it's two ways you can have the electric coil at two twenty or you can have it's actually an alcohol burner underneath. Aha, uh -huh. I see. So I mean you're never at a loss for for cooking. If you don't have enough power, you just use alcohol. Well, that's so. good. That's good. <laughs> I mean, I think the design and the, the kind of the IKEA look of the teak is another selling point. And, and uh, it's a 20-year-old boat. But it's like a classic, and we just love keeping it alive, yeah. you know. And it does feel like home. Oh, I yeah, think. it's quite You homey. say it's camping, but I, I would say this is a home. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny house. <laughs> The aft cabin is separate. Oh and yeah. That's kind of nice if we have crew or people that you know want to come on board and be private. When the uh, previous owners sailed around the world, they stored the they stored food in here. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, when you do have crew, it is nice that they uh, have their own space. Exactly. They can even get up in the morning and not disturb you. Exactly. All the other way around. The plan is to sail Tribetha to Turkey for the winter. Turkey's outside Schengen, so that extends cruising time in the Med. The original idea was to buy a monohull or a catamaran. So what happened? So what and, uh, we did, we were monohull sailors. Right. And we went to the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, and they had this Corsair trimaran out there and free demos, and we jumped on this boat. And we were just impressed. It just like took off. There's hardly any wind at all, and we're just sailing fast. It's like, yeah. wow, this is amazing. How can this happen? Yeah. And we, we weren't expecting that. So we got off that boat, and what did you say? I hate that boat. Yeah. <laughs> I really hate that boat. Because it was too fun. Because it means you have, you have to buy it. It was an expensive <laughs> boat, very expensive. It's, yeah. it's hard to justify. We got a used one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. hard to justify. A trimaran, they're really expensive. Yeah. I mean, it cost them a lot to build it. I mean, for this, we could have had a very nice catamaran yeah. for what we paid for this. We yeah. really could have. Yeah. We even put a bid on one, and they turned us down, and we put the bid on this, and this is what we ended up with. So. Yeah. But um, you're, you're choosing a, a, a racy boat, and I know that yeah, you've got a yeah, racing yeah. background, both yeah. of you. So, yeah. you know, I can sort of see the attraction, that's what you want. But it's not what most people pick for cruising. So how is it, how is it working as a cruising boat? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Working. I can be it's perfectly working. comfortable on the on the port settee. It's just long enough. It's long enough for me. Mm -hmm. um, Even though we have a cabin ahead, you know. We have the cabin in the bow. I wouldn't say that's my favorite. I do like the stern cabin. In the F-27, we had a stern cabin. Mm. And uh, I like that a lot better. But... Yeah. But for us, we we like the stability of it. Yeah. We like the flexibility of it. We can yeah. go into very shallow water. You know, with the boards up like we have right now, yeah. we're, we're 0.75 meters. Oh, wow. If I'd known that, I would have put you right on the beach over there. With <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And you can actually supposedly beach them, but, you know, with the engine and propeller and everything down yeah. there, I'm yeah. not doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, We'd yeah. have to but... kedge ourselves off or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot lots of, of places, but... particularly the med, that does make you very flexible. As yeah. you say, there yeah. are places we draw two meters and there are lots of places we can't go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well not only it. that, packed anchors, yeah. you'll find some places, yeah. I'm sure you have already, where you go in and anchorage yeah. is packed, but you can sneak around the front of them and just go in that that's little That's exactly right, no yeah. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. So the other advantage of this, or flexibility point of this, is that it, it folds, so the floats come in, Yeah. and then from 8.6 meters, we're down to 4.3, and we can pretend to be in monohull when we go to, into any mooring, yeah. any berth. And yeah. So how do the marinas deal with that when you say, oh, you know, they say, what's the beam? And you say, four meters, nine well, meters. Yeah, there's, well, they, they look at us and they say, oh, you're a catamaran. 
we're a trimaran. Well, the list shows catamaran. You're a catamaran. No, we're we're the size of a monohull. So we have a little bit of a discussion usually, yeah. and they finally come down to okay, we'll we'll charge you a monohull rate, you know, and so so that's what we get. Yeah. And lifting out, as well. You lift out when you're you lift fold it. You fold, fold it to lift. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you know, the corning has is phenomenal for design, and they built into this boat there are three. Four. Or four, four lifting rings. Mm. So you just fold it up, latch onto those rings, yeah. lift it right up. It so comes with its own. It, yeah. it comes with its own uh, yeah. cables. Yeah. yeah. It, it can so be. You, so you lift it by crane, not by travel lift, then. Not you can. You can do it by travel, travel lift. Travel I mean, others have yeah. done it by travel lift. Okay. So but and they, they explain how. But you can either crane it or lift it by travel lift using the lifting points yeah. on a travel lift. Yeah. yeah. But going back to the lifestyle then, the cruising <laughs> lifestyle, yeah. you're retired and yeah. you're now cruisers. Right. How's that working out? Well, I think in it's the main we, we enjoy it. <laughs> and, and to be honest, Judy, what we are doing, we're doing six months. Like last year, we only did three months because of Schengen yeah. and went home. Yeah. And we, we were kind of sorry to leave. We're going to be happy to be able to do our six months this year. And then we go home for six months. And I think it's a good way to start out cruising yeah, yeah. you know and the med yeah. is perfect for that because you can go from spain to italy hang out for a while you can go to sicily hang out for a while and you could put it in a safe spot they were telling us trapani would have been great to keep the boat in sicily so you can find a place to put yeah. the boat and go home for a while and yeah. it's not that expensive and what do you yeah. think about cruising in the Med? Because we don't see a lot of Americans cruises in, in the Med. Well, because we, it is difficult with Schengen, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah. also, yeah. I mean, what, what do you think about that when you were doing it? Well, you, you know, we, we had a huge liability that we had no idea we were getting into when we bought the boat. Mm. And, and it boils down to insurance. Uh, Americans in the Med on a trimaran. That's virtually not insurable. Wow. Even Americans in the med is very difficult to insure. Mm -hmm. You know, we call Pontanius, we call Pantanius, and we call many yeah. other companies. Chubb. No, won't touch it. Oh, they won't do you, no. really? No. Now, Pantanius took us. Okay. Finally, but. We have to be British Virgin Island flagged. They preferred all British so flags. Right. We've, because they're a British company. We've got, yes. a, we've got a company now. Yeah. Set up in the British Virgin Islands, the only per and, and they're used to this, they do this all the time. The only purpose of the company is to hold the boat so that we can get insurance on the boat. Yeah. And any payout will go to the company, so then the company needs to have a bank account, which will cost you more money. Mm -hmm. Because of American and IRS and all those yeah, issues. Yeah, and yeah. Liability. Yeah. Liability. And Lawyers in the U.S., I think. I guess. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, okay. Insurance aside, though, mm, yeah, yeah. what about the actual sailing? For, for people that are thinking of this, that, that think they can get the insurance, the Americans that are coming over, what would you say about cruising in the, in, in the Med? Well, as, you know, we, living in Florida, we've cruised to the Bahamas, we've, we've done the British Virgin Islands and done that several times, and, and, and that's a little bit more like, a, well, one person said it, the BVI is like sailing, sailing in, a, in bathtub. a bathtub, you know? <laughs> All these close by, you go around and circle on it. And, and this is a this is a much bigger bathtub. <laughs> it is is a, it's it's more serious. And we knew it coming in. You know, you have the the Meltemi and uh, yeah. the 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 other yeah, yeah. strong yeah. winds. You know, the you got to watch that. The one that comes yeah. from France. <coughs> the Mistral. The Mistral. Yeah. And so uh, you and know, and different countries, of course. Yeah, yeah. and so learning and the languages, languages yeah. is another attraction for me because yeah. I speak Spanish <clears throat> pretty fluently. And then uh, I have just a little French. And so then if you have Spanish and French, you can do Italian. You can almost speak Spanish to Italians and they'll kind of understand yeah. you. <laughs> so with her language, that helps a lot, you know, so yeah. thank goodness for that. Um, but also, you know, the stern two uh, moorings, uh, stern two, the rocks like we are right now. This is yeah. the first it's, time. This is the first time. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your help. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll only get easier. Um, yeah. And we have done a video on Stern Times. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did exactly. Watch, I watched that. I'd had to come for the for the hands-on lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, the hands-on lesson. But uh, you know, you, you've got to you got to plan your your routes better, you know, than than what we had to do on charter boats. And, yeah. 
Um, but no tides, so that's that's an advantage. Uh, yeah. You know, makes that sort of navigation and, and mooring a little bit easier. That's I true. mean, for us, that's true. in in, uh, in in England, we get huge tides. Oh. So yeah, this, that's this, yeah. This, yeah. This, You know, that is one of the places to sail before you die is the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight, okay. yes. Yeah. And I'm sure that's a place of tides. Yeah, we've, eh? we've got this. It certainly is. <laughs> Big tides, but that's not the place you that I would I suggest that's you where go. I nearly if, died, if actually, you went to England, if you go to England, you go to, to the West Country. You go to Devon and Cornwall. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The Silly Isles, that's the place to sail. And I see. The, uh, I think the, the Solent is the sort of the centre of sailing for the UK. It's where all the mm. posh yacht clubs are. <laughs> yes, and, and exactly. They, mm. It's all the home of sailing in the, in the UK, but it's not the best place to sail. Mm. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not for real sailors. Real sailors go to the West Coast. <laughs> so will you be taking this boat home back to the US? We don't think? know. We, we actually don't, don't know. No it can be packed up and shipped on a freighter. Sure, yeah. Because so you can fold can it that. in, yeah. pack Super it in. Nice, yeah. It's only uh, 12 and a half meters mm. by the five meters about with packing. Yeah. And it can be done. And I'm not an ocean crosser, really. No. No. I'm not for miles and miles overnight. You know, the two day crossing from Spain to Sardinia was my, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> well, what about you, Rob? Would you think of doing it with crew? Uh, if crossing? You, if you were going to take the crossing, boat back to yeah. the States? Yeah, I don't think so. Mm. The the more that I'm sailing here and, and learning what uh, what the winds and the weather can do, the less I'm um, anxious for that. You know, sure. Um, I I think the boat is is really good and can handle it fine. Mm. You know, the previous owner sailed it around the world, um, and oh, he's really? told us stories. Yeah. He's uh, told us stories of being in huge winds and yeah. fifty knot plus and huge waves and yeah. and uh, he said he just kind of shut down and. Pointed Shut everything to the wind. down, pointed into the wind, went down below yeah. and managed by you the can, cockpit. You cockpit. can do the autopilot so, down below. So what does he have as, as heavy weather taxis? Because a lot of, I mean, a lot of <laughs> lighter boats, a lighter monohull, for, for instance, you, mm -hmm. the, and certainly the modern ones that have got the flat bottom have a problem they get too much speed, big waves. They've got to slow the boat down, so mm -hmm. you're, you're talking droves, you're talking all sorts of stuff, which is difficult to handle. One right, of the reasons right. we like our boats heavy doesn't really have that problem. But imagine this would get some speed, so there must be a heavy weather tactic. But you, you think it's, he just points in? He doesn't run with it. He yeah. sort of yeah. I, he pointed in. I, yeah. I think uh, I think he and and I don't understand it well enough. But some, uh, uh, some of the tactics are you know to 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 angle to the waves so yeah. you're you're making your own sort of uh, calm spot in yeah, in, 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 the, yeah, in the yeah, splash. Yeah, we, we I, I think it's done anchor, that. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but exactly how I don't know. But. We have never used a sea anchor, but uh, you know. I've read Lynn and Larry Party's Storm Tactics, mm. and so I saw one and I said maybe we should have one, but you know, we, our plan is hide, yeah. you know, be in a place where yeah. you can yeah. go and be safe. Yeah. Yeah. And we're and kind of, and the med is good for that because there are places like this mm. where right, it's you perfect. can sit for a couple of days yeah. and let the wind go past you. Yeah. And Catapola over on Amorgos, I mean, the meds hemming was coming down for what, five days? Yeah. And uh, there's nothing, it was, was nothing in the, you know, you might see up to 20 blow gust and that's it. Yeah. You know, and the anchor held us and we're happy. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, uh, the waters of the Med are awesome. Clear. You know, yeah. The clear, clear. the yeah. colors, it's just, it's amazing. You know, um, that's, that's, that's one of the advantages of being here. Yeah. So the actual, um, the hulls that are on the, on either side. Yeah, They're mainly the for storage, are they? The floats. Yeah. yeah, mainly for storage. You know, we're we're 8.6 meters wide when extended, and then when we come down to 4.3 meters. They're mainly for storage, mainly for light storage. They are buoyancy. They're the equivalent to us of your keel. I mean, yeah. that's that's what keeps us up. Yeah. yeah. You know? And it keeps um, us flat. <clears throat> and I have read that uh, for for trimarans, the riding moment of a trimaran, you know, tipping over yeah. moment, yeah. is five times greater. Than that of a monohull. Yeah. Yes, I Because of these that. floats. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Got, yeah, got we've had like massive form stability with, with these out there, but obviously you have got the problem that if it did for any reason go over, it ain't coming back again. No, <laughs> no. but it will not no. sink. But it will not sink. Okay. According yeah. to the manufacturer, yeah. it will never sink. Because these floats are sealed. Yeah, there's down, multiple. Yeah, yeah. I think there's one, two, three separate, maybe four separate uh, containers in each float. Yeah. Plus the, the yeah. They sand, filled so. it with water and sailed, and sailed across. It. Yeah, they have a demonstration across of it. the English Channel, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. so it's kind of indestructible. We're more worried about keeping it and keeping us safe 
then probably the boat is worried. The boat yeah. is strong. Yes. The boater is stronger than the sailors <laughs> or sailors. And then our mentality. That's normally the way. And you do feel safe in here, in the center cockpit. Absolutely. Now, yes. the newer one, they yeah. have a stern cockpit, so it's totally different. You know, mm. yeah. I don't know why they did that, but that's, you mm. know, it's, but we like the center co cockpit. We really love it. We, yeah. we don't have much motion here. One of the bad things about this trimaran is you get a little lazy below, and you don't put <laughs> stuff away because stuff doesn't fall over. You know, yeah. I've, got a, I've got a toothbrush, electric <laughs> toothbrush standing yeah. up, you know, yeah. we'll go sailing in 20 knots of wind, and I go down, and yeah. it's still standing there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I think that's an advantage. It <laughs> is. That's very good. It is. But you have got the same problem of a catamaran in that you, you can get caught out downwind with increasing wind, having too much sail up. In the, yeah, you, yeah. You don't you've you've got to go up into the wind. You've got to keep a check of that, have you? Because yeah. you've yeah. got to ground up then. To, yeah. to get things down. So. I don't know what the yeah, sailing is. The, there's something about reef now, <coughs> reef early, or something like that. Yeah, if you think yeah. about reefing, then it's, it's already too late. too late to reef. Yeah, just reef. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we have the, the manufacturer These puts the... out uh, reefing times yeah. for okay. the speed oh, of the handy. wind or the Beaufort. Okay, yeah. Okay. And uh, it's different for downwind than it is for upwind. So it's saying you can run, run full sail up and up to full five, so that's 21 knots. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's about what now, we do. About 17 yeah. or 18, we're yeah. already taking down. Yeah. 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 And how fast do you go? Speak? Well, that varies based on your your uh, tolerance of risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For for us, we've seen what up to 12, a little over 12 wow. knots, 13 yeah. maybe, but uh, so fast. but typically. Typically, we're hovering what around seven or seven eight? and eight is generally eight. Yeah. it. it is. But you know, for most on. passages, if you took the miles and divide by the time, mm -hmm. you're going to see five to six because some of the time you're motoring. Yeah. A beautiful boat sailed by a lovely couple. Thanks for showing us around.